the latter times, many would be led astray from the faith, giving heed to seducing doctrines and doctrines of devils. This doctrine is not even of men, it's of devils, and it's a very dangerous thing. Very dangerous. And they would say, Lord, Lord, did I not cast out devils and prophesy in your name? And he'd said, I never knew you. Uh, getting, getting a hope from God <laughs> to be able to see, to discern the times and the seasons that's ahead of you. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant, a wild elephant. It was radical, 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 radical. And the elephant means a great impact. And I really felt like what happened in Lakeland was just the beginning, it was just an introductory, it was just an introduction, just a table of content of what's to come. Hello viewers, hello subscribers, and all of YouTube land. Anybody that clicks on this video, this will be a very interesting video. I've had some people who have recently asked me to talk about um, some of the things that are going on in the religious circles and uh, the anointing and things like that. I used to be uh, in uh, the Pentecostal charismatic type movement at one time I, I was Baptist and I went into that and this and that you know and I learned some things and I I really want you to hear some of these things that I have found in the scriptures I got to a point one time to where I said Lord you know I'm kind of confused about a few things and and you said in your word that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and I always was thinking about the way that that's worded, not like set free, but it would make you free, and the way why that's worded that way, and and uh, because when we're a new creation in Christ, and and uh, what, there's some things that I want to talk about, but we'll have to look at what the scriptures say, and then we're going to look at some examples of these anointings that are going on out there, and we're going to look at what the Lord said about it. And there are some things in the Bible, in it, and you may have read these things before, but you didn't really look at it in this way. And it will make perfect sense when you look at the scriptures in this in this uh, way that we're, that I'm talking about. But we'll have to we'll have to look at the word because the word is swift and quick and powerful and sharper than a two edged sword and dividing us under the the bone and marrow and all that kind of thing, and the, or the soul, the soul and the spirit and and uh, down to the marrow. Um, so I've got some verses here pulled up we're going to look at and then we're going to look at clips. So hang in there with me and we'll see you in a minute. Let's first look at Matthew 24 5 at the top there. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. In this verse we have coming in my name which that is Jesus so they're saying they're coming in the name of Jesus and then Christ means anointed so they're coming in the name of Jesus I've got this tremendous anointing that I can depart unto you that's the kind of thing Jesus is talking about so let's look down here at Luke 21 8 he says take heed ye be not deceived He's saying, okay, take heed here. Do not be deceived by this thing right here. For many shall come in my name. So he's saying, many shall come in the name of Jesus, saying, I am anointed. And the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. That is huge. Do not go after these people who come in Jesus' name, saying, I am anointed. Jesus warns you specifically right there. That this is a very dangerous thing and then for instance you take the scripture where many Jesus said many will come to me and say Lord Lord did I not cast out devils and prophesy in your name and what did Jesus say he said I never knew you depart from me you workers of iniquity so let's look at Matthew 7 
21. A little bit closer. We're going to start at 21. Matthew 7, 21. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And here we go. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Listen to what he says. Now, who, who does that sound like? Who does that? Okay? And, and then he says right here, And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Never. That word right there, never. I never knew you. Not backslid or anything like that. I knew you and you backslid or you departed from the faith or anything like that. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then, uh, the, so that's a very serious thing. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him un, unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And that rock right there is Jesus, not Peter. Okay, so that, that's another little clue about the Peter thing. All right, so this is very clear to me. So I, I really hope that you take this and you take the other scripture and we'll, we'll uh, meditate on these things. 1 Timothy 4.1 Right here. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, how do they depart from the faith? They give heed to seducing spirits. These seducing spirits are the ones bringing a doctrine that comes from who? Devils. This doctrine does not even come from men. And most people that watch my channel know that I have lots of different videos about how these supernatural experiences and paranormal things uh, make people think in a specific way that promotes evolution or anything but the scriptures. And so that's kind of what I specialize in is these this scripture right here. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly on this matter. This is a very important thing. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. These people depart from the faith by giving heed to these seducing spirits. And these doctrines or teachings, doctrine means teachings, of what? Devils. So, these uh, churches that's got this stuff going on, these, these uh, doctrines that is going on in these churches with these anointings and things like that, because Jesus even said a little bit further down in Matthew that we just read, that, that uh, many false prophets will rise up. And that's a latter time thing that we're seeing right now. So these spirits that they're imparting unto people are seducing spirits. And they are bringing doctrines of devils. And what does it do ultimately since we are saved by grace through faith? Do you get that? Grace is free. You cannot earn it. You cannot earn your salvation. But you are saved by grace through something. So to get to that free salvation, you have to go through faith. Ye are saved by grace through faith. And it's not of works, lest any man boast. So this right here is a very important scripture. So take those three scriptures we just looked at, or four scriptures, but two of them are really similar, and uh, put those together, meditate on that. It's a very important thing, and it's eternal salvation that's at stake. Now the basic question that we're asking in this documentary is, why are these manifestations so similar to Eastern religions and Hinduism and the Kundalini cults, and yet they're not found in Scripture, they're not found in the Bible, they're not found in classical Christianity at all? <laughs> oh, 
Of course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a Kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a Kundalini awakening. And amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing. Isn't it incredible that starting around 1994, this stuff could invade the entire charismatic church movement almost worldwide on a vast scale, and yet it's absolutely identical, seemingly, to Kundalini Hinduism. Here's Rodney Howard Brown imparting uh, the spirit of drunkenness and laughter into... Uh, some of the biggest leaders in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the biggest word of faith, prosperity, teachers. <laughs> A guy called Randy Clark came down, saw what was happening, got this impartation through the laying on of hands, got this anointing himself, and he took it into the vineyard movement. Now here is Todd Bentley explaining uh, how Randy Clark brought this in. He received a spark of the anointing in Tulsa and in Lakeland came down. And just weeks later, God used him as the fire starter for the Toronto outpouring and the Toronto blessing in January 1994. And we have here tonight Randy Clark. And I asked him to come out, dear Randy, because I know you're a fire starter. And you've been lighting fires all over the world. So it entered into the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church. And so it became known as the Toronto Blessing. Went worldwide under that name. The Toronto Blessing. Everybody knew what that was about. People falling down, acting drunken, laughing hysterically, shaking uncontrollably, or uh, jerking backwards and forwards, their, their head shaking back and forth. People even roaring like lions. People making animal noises. Um, you know, this stuff had not been seen in the church. I mean, it maybe in a tiny way on the fringes. This stuff had never been seen in the church on this scale before, and it invaded worldwide. So all around the world, especially in the Commonwealth countries, we're talking England and all through the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, and many other nations all over the world, all through Europe, all of the charismatic movement was into this stuff uh, for the large part. And so this thing became a worldwide sensation just in a couple of years. That's very serious stuff. So I was going to do something fun here before we go on to the next clip. I've got this webcam here and I was going to show you all a little bit of what, how I do some of this uh, video editing and what have you. This next clip is going to be from a guy, though, that uh, um, he doesn't really have very good equipment, but he uh, slows down some uh, situations uh, where people were preaching, and he catches them saying like stuff like, come, take the marker to peace. I mean, it's bad. And then he, uh, he's got one where he was saying that uh, um, tie, he, he talks to the devil and tells him to tie the money up. Now, so, but I don't even like talking about it too much, but uh, I'll show you a short little clip of that. But anyway, uh, I have uh, here a uh, uh, little laptop. I have Corel Video Studio that I do some editing with. And I have another computer here that I use some. And then I was going to show you uh, light, uh, can light. And it's uh, very, very, uh, very, very hot. I'm not going to turn it back off, but it, that you could cook on that thing. And then I have a, a camera set up over here, and um, so that I have decent lighting and what have you. And then the high fidelity microphone that I have on here, and then I have another microphone I plug up. But thought y'all might like to see that, and uh, we'll go to the next clips there. I really want y'all to meditate on these scriptures, and it's very important stuff. It's it's just huge and hugely important how that these things are being imparted uh, to people. They're, they're laying hands on people and giving them demons. I mean, it's, it's just no other way to say it. It's, it's so serious. 
and um, I, I don't want it to happen. So um, I, I need you all to even help me with this ministry to uh, help this kind of thing not happen. And, and you know, I, I have, you know, a broadcasting uh, education and what have you, and, and I can't really do the construction work anymore. So um, this is what I know how to do, and I so I'm, I'm going to do this and try to put the word out there and uh, help some people. But uh, let's look at this other little clip, at least look at one, I guess, uh, um, where he, he asks someone to come up and take the mark of the beast. It's crazy, it, but, it, but it really sounds like he's saying it. So we'll look at that, and then we'll wrap the, this, this episode up, and then we will work on some um, making some more uh, things similar to this that I've found in the Bible and, and maybe help some people out. Let us begin with the first one. This is one that a lot of Christians viewing the footage have already picked up. On this one you can see Kenneth Copeland calling Dennis Burke to the front for ministry and he invites him to come and take the mark of the beast. What we must understand here is that if he comes out and pronounces the word clearly, a large part of the congregation would probably get up and walk out of the meeting and reject his ministry altogether. But if he says it in a disguised manner, making out as though he is speaking in tongues, then he can fool the listeners and get away with it. So we are not putting words into his mouth as the words mark of the beast are clearly pronounced. And that should be enough for a Christian to seriously consider rejecting his ministry. He is not speaking in another language here in which the words of that language sound like this phrase in English. I'll be proving this to you on the next example. So let us have a listen to it. I'll play it for you two times at normal speed and then I'll freeze the picture and play the sound of his voice at slower speeds in order to help you hear exactly what he's saying. I'll be doing this to all the examples on the video. So listen carefully now to Kenneth Copeland's voice as he's purposely speaking in a disguised manner while pretending to be speaking in tongues. And he says the words, come, take the mark of the beast. So what do you think about that clip? Sounds like he was saying something to me about the mark of the beast. Um, now, the Holy Spirit is supposed to come and convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit is not doing all these other things that these people are claiming that the Holy Spirit is doing. It's sin, righteousness, and judgment. And then also, the Holy Spirit would not speak of himself. He's always pointing toward Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus this, Jesus that, you know, it, and so, you know, when a preacher imparts something to you, they're going to impart the word of God to you, and then God waters and gives the increase, so preachers and teachers that give you the word of God, and then your uh, relationship with God, that's between you and God, and, and he can certainly bless you, and contributing to a ministry that's fine and that's good, but if anyone ever promises you things for your contributions, then they are doing what the scripture says that uh, they would do in the latter times is make merchandise of you. You're not merchandise. Supporting a ministry that preaches the word of God is a good thing, but if you're getting promises and, you, and they're bragging and boasting of their anointings and trying to impart something to you this other than the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit with with the, the things that the Holy Spirit is supposed to do, then, then run from it because it's not of God. So, hope you enjoyed that. I have some ideas for several other uh, videos in the, in the religion category. I've had lots of them in the phenomenons category, the uh, paranormal, looking at it through a Bible lens and showing the deceiving... Uh, spirits at work in the in the alien thing that's out there in the abduction scenarios and and what they promote you know promoting evolution I, I think is one of the big things 
that most people or the new age uh, move, you know, the new age belief systems and, and things like that. So I think it's important to start getting some videos out there that deal with uh, when someone goes from the new age movement or believing uh, in the UFOs and aliens are from far off galaxies when they move from there and run to religion and they run to the wrong denomination and and start getting messed up in some crazy other doctrines then they're no more saved than they were they might as well stayed where they were at so that's the focus of this channel and this ministry is to uh, expose the works of darkness and uh, the deceptions of the end times because we believe that we're near the end at least you, you know and study out Matthew there where we were looking at that verse where Jesus was talking in Matthew 23 and you can uh, finish that and study out there and he tells you a lot more stuff and I did make a, uh, uh, a recording of that whole verse um, and it was 45 minutes long so I may make that into a video Thank you very much. Subscribe, share these videos, please. And I'll see you on the next video. This here comes from a subscriber, Catherine Helm, who sent me something that says, um, the guy is named James Gall. Here is an excerpt of, a, of the link that I'm sending you where he appeared on Sid Roth's show. Sid Roth is a show that does supernatural covers uh, supernatural things and he's all for it and what have you but it says goal it happened on the day of atonement he state uh, started uh, meant stated uh, a lightning bolt crashed into the bedroom and a man an angel and is at the end of my bed watch your wife I'm about to speak to her he tells me the angel put his hands on her and then the Lord called her to be a teacher and a prophetess that night. This is according to Gull. He then described a huge ball of light dancing over the dresser that illuminated the whole room with the glory of God, which Gull says, opened the door of nine straight weeks of visitations that would go from midnight to 5 a.m. It was supernatural encounters of a supernatural God. The other nights were uh, the other nights there would be dozens of gl glory orbs floating around the room. Then he sells the anointing. So he takes this as what he gets and he sells it. And through this four part series, uh, you will begin to experience rivers of living uh, uh, rivers of living water flow through you to others. Understand that this main purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so that you can walk in supernatural power. No, it isn't. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is for conviction, judgment, and righteousness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Okay? And then you would get fruits from the Holy Spirit from that work that He does right there. That conviction, and righteousness, and judgment. He brings like conviction and things to you, you know? And then uh, through that kind of work, you begin to have joy and peace and love and, and, uh, and, and kindness and gentleness and all, all those kind of things. Long-suffering. Uh, which is patience. A lot of people think that they suffer, and it, you know, which is part of sometimes things working out according to the book of James. 